So many people struggle with anxiety. It tends to come up at inconvenient times. What if there was a way we could look at it as a superpower? Our guest this morning has a unique view on anxiety. She's helped hundreds of patients overcome mental and physical disabilities. This morning we're speaking with breast cancer survivor and psychotherapist Natalie Kolhas, who is the author of Hello Anxiety, My Old Friend. Well, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us, ma'am. So starting off, what is your first piece of advice for people who've spent years struggling with anxious thoughts, trying to overcome them? So individuals often see anxiety as an enemy and they want to push it away. However, we know when they've been struggling for a long time that they are completely misunderstanding what anxiety is, what anxiety is trying to tell them, and how to utilize anxiety. So thus my very what and who anxiety is. I'm actually very interested in what all you have to say about anxiety because I am six months pregnant and I dealt with a lot of anxiety in the first trimester. So I know you talk about anxiety just, you know, overall for everyone, but that was something I recently dealt with. I'm finally out of it. I think it helped me to actually see the baby move in our last um, ultrasound. But yeah, I dealt with that bad. And, you know, what would you say would be the first step someone could take to view anxiety as a good thing? Well, first off, congratulations. Thank you. Um, and one of the first things that we work on is understanding the difference. So what you were experiencing is fear. Mm -hmm. um, and fear ends up bringing up our anxiety. So what we work with is for people to understand that fear actually only has one mission. That's to keep you emotionally and physically ought to have you be happy. Anxiety actually is a little different. Anxiety pops up when fear is saying something that one, is not 100% correct, two, removing and taking you away from the values that you hold, or three, removing opportunities that life is actually presenting to you. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would you say in your perspective is the hardest part about changing the way somebody feels about anxiety? That is untangling the way people see anxiety. And to begin to understand that fear and anxiety are actually not the same thing, they have very different missions. And while they may work together and walk together, Anxiety's mission is actually to have each of us experience safety, but more importantly, it wants us to experience our better selves. And I've recently learned just dealing with that, that you know, once you can train for a marathon easily. You gotta run all the time or you gotta work out all the time, but training your brain is very hard, I've learned. You've gotta constantly work at it. But how could it be different for someone who is probably taking medication for this? We often refer to medication as a stepping stool. And the stool allows the person to be able to reach and retrieve whatever the tools are that they need to step into the skills maybe that they have learned in therapy. Medication actually does not apply the skills or bring the skills into play that they need. So. While we each need tools to move forward, it is possible that medication will actually allow them, again, to reach for those tools. Yeah. And we've learned that you are a breast cancer survivor, and I can't imagine what that fight was like. But you were pronounced dead for nine minutes when you're, you had that cancer scare. Can you share with us what that was like? So my brain and everybody's brain actually knows that its primary goal is to care for us. Thus, I actually don't remember the few days before, during, or after that event. Oh my um, I wish I could be able to say I saw the light, um, but my brain knows it was more important for me to stay here in the present in order for me to move forward. Um, the one thing that I do clearly remember is waking up in the hospital bed, mm -hmm. laying there and asking myself, why am I still here? Is there something I need to be doing? And I got this very, very clear answer. Mm -hmm. It was your patients say constantly that you describe anxiety in such a real and useful way, you should write a book. 
So I finally listened to my patients and I wrote the book, Hello Anxiety, My Old Friend. One final question, we're running out of time. Where can they get that book, anybody who's interested? So you can find it right now at www.helloanxiety.net. At the end of the month, it will be available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. We're hoping to get it out into Target and Walmart and most of the major distributors. Well, Natalie, thank you again so much for joining us. It is early in the morning, and thank you for sharing your story and what your book holds for us. I, I look forward to getting it. Like I said, it was something I dealt with, and I'm sure it does come again with having a child. So thank you again oh, yes. for your time. 